myself, Dr. P. Somya, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College. Today in this session, I am going to discuss about corrosion control methods. In this session, I am going to discuss about corrosion control methods, cathodic protection, sacrificial anodic protection and impressed current cathodic protection. So before going to this session, for first we should know what is corrosion. Corrosion means the process of deterioration or consequent loss of solid metallic material through unwanted chemical or electrochemical attack by its environment. Starting at its surface is called as corrosion. Process of deterioration or consequent loss of solid metallic material. So if we take one material, the consequent loss consequent loss of material because of electrochemical attack or chemical attack on the surface of metal is called as corrosion. So all we know that based on the environment, corrosion is classified into two types. First one is dry or chemical corrosion, second one is wet or electrochemical corrosion. This dry corrosion is due to this dry corrosion is due to chemical attack of metal surface. This is due to chemical attack of environment on metal surface such as reaction with oxygen, nitrogen, SO2, H2S and inorganic liquid ammonia. Inorganic liquids, inorganic liquid metals. So the dry ke or chemical corrosion is due to chemical attack of atmospheric gases such as oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur dioxide, H2S, etc. on the metal surface. Here without moisture, here without moisture means only dry chemical attack, only dry attack. So this is called as dry or chemical corrosion. So what is wet or electrochemical corrosion? This chemical corrosion this electrochemical corrosion occurs due to uh, reaction of metal surface with the environment in moist conditions. In moist conditions. Moist means water. Presence of water in atmosphere. So this type of corrosion is due to uh, uh, reaction of metal with reaction of metal with environment. Metal with environment which is having water. So, this type of corrosion is called as electrochemical or wet corrosion. This electrochemical corrosion again divided into two types that is differential metal corrosion and differential aeration corrosion. So, differential metal corrosion this is due to presence of different metals, two different metals, two different metals which are having different potentials which are having two different potentials electrode potentials potentials are contact with each other this type of corrosion is occurs means differential metal uh, corrosion occurs due to different uh, presence of different metals in contact with each other you having different potentials so the second one is differential aeration corrosion this type of corrosion occurs when uneven supply of oxygen is there due to uneven supply of oxygen due to uneven supply of oxygen this again div divided into water line corrosion and pitting corrosion water line corrosion and pitting corrosion these both are because of uneven supply of oxygen so this is about types of electrochemical corrosion and uh, dry corrosion so we don't know how to, first we have to know how to control the corrosion. So, they have developed some methods. The first one is cathodic protection and second one is surface coatings. For controlling corrosion, they developed two, two types of control methods. First one is cathodic protection, second one is surface coatings. In this session, I am going to discuss about only cathodic protection. So, this cathodic protection is a technique based on converting 
active areas on metal surface to passive. Active areas are converted into passive. Active metal, active metals converted into passive. Means inactive, inactive metal surfaces. So, in other words, making them the cathode of an electrochemical cell. So, we know that at cathode corrosion is not takes place, only at anode corrosion is takes place in electrochemical cell. So, we have to make them, make the metals as the cathode of an electrochemical cell. So, this is about cathodic protection. This cathodic protection again div divided into sacrificial anodic protection and impressed current cathodic protection. This is divided into two types, sacrificial anodic protection and impressed current cathodic protection. First one is uh, sacrificial anode. First we should know, uh, this is the brief explanation about cathodic protection in this principle involved in this method is to force the metal to be protected. To force the metal to be protected to behave like cathode. The principle of uh, cathodic protection is it is a method to force the metal to protect it to behave like a cathode. Therefore, corrosion of the parent metal prevented. Corrosion of the prevent metal. Parent metal is prevented. It helps to prevent the corrosion of underground pipelines and tanks, vessels in the oil and gas industries. Due to the oxidation of metal, which is losing electrons and metal get corroded. So, it helps to prevent the corrosion of underground pipelines, tanks and vessels in the oil and gas industries. So, this uh, divided into two types, sacrificial anodic protection and uh, impressed current cathodic protection. So, first one is sacrificial anodic protection. In this method, the metallic structure to be protected is electrically connected to more active or anodic metal than the metallic structure to be protected. If we take one metal, if we want to protect this metal, first we have to connect this with the more active metal. More active metal. Or anodic metal. More active means anodic metal. Anodic metal than this metal. So, this is called as parent metal. A metallic structure to be protected. So, first we have to connect the another metal which is having more active, active, more active than this parent metal. So, that's why he, this is access anode. This parent metal is acts as cathode. So, that, uh, that's why corrosion of anode takes place but not parent metal. So, the more active metal acts as anode and gets corroded slowly. While the parent structure is forced to act as cathode of galvanic cell, hence protected. So, we know that the anode, at anode oxidation is takes place means corrosion is takes place. At cathode, no corrosion is takes place. That's why first we have to convert the parent metal uh, to cathode by connecting more active metal such as uh, this the cost of replacement of corroded anodic metal is much less than replacing pipes. Here, here for protecting pipeline, underground pipeline, this is iron pipeline, iron pipeline. Here we, they, we are connecting magnesium which is highly active than iron, which is highly active than iron. So, it can, it can access anode, it can access cathode. So, this is forcefully access cathode by connecting highly active anode, which is magnesium, which is magnesium. So, this magnesium, at magnesium, corrosion is takes place and this iron is protected. Iron is protected. So, this magnesium acts as an anode and it is preventing the corrosion of iron pipeline, which is, is in the underground of the earth. So, as this more active metal is sacrificed its life, in the process of saving metallic structure from corrosion, 
it is known as sacrificial anode and therefore the method is called as sacrificial anodic protection so while this uh, while the process the the active metal the anodic metal is sacrificing it, uh, its life so the, in the, that process is called as sacrificial anodic protection that anode is called as sacrificial anode so the metals which are commonly used in sacrificial anodes are magnesium zinc aluminum and their alloys magnesium zinc aluminum and their alloys because because of the high activity these are these uh, three are more active than other metals so this can act as a anodic materials uh, that can act as sacrificial anodes and this is uh, connected to the uh, various uh, iron rods iron pipes and tanks which are which are in the underground so the that's why the metals are protected by using magnesium zinc aluminum anodes so applications of sacrificial anodic protection so protection of buried pipelines underground cables from soil corrosion so protection of from protection from marine corrosion of cables ship hulls and fires etc using sacrificial anodic protection insertion of magnesium sheets into domestic water boilers to prevent the formation of rust and also calcium metal is employed to minimize engine corrosion so advantages of sacrificial anodic protection are low installation and operating cost low installation and operating cost cost and uh, capacity to protect complex structures and this can be applied to wide range of severe corrosions wide range of severe corrosions so limitations are high starting current is required for sa sacrificial anodic protection high starting current is required the uncoated parts of that uh, iron pipes cannot be protected and also limited driving potential hence not applicable for large objects not applicable for large objects this is only applicable for small objects only small objects not large objects not large objects objects because of limited driving potential limited driving potential so this is about limitations of sacrificial anodic protection and the second one is impressed current cathodic protection impressed current cathodic protection in this method an impressed current is applied in this current impressed current is applied in opposite direction in opposite direction to nullify the corrosion current and convert the corroding metal from anode to cathode while metal when we placed metal in the environment the metal can undergo oxidation metal can undergo oxidation and it forms metal ion metal ion and electrons so in the case some metal parts are access anode and some metal parts are acts as cathode in this so oxidation is takes place at anode and it will form some electrons so the flow of because of flow of electrons flow of electrons current is one uh, current is passed so that current is called as corrosion current corrosion current this is the current is due to corrosion of metal is called as corrosion current in this method an impressed current is applied in opposite direction to nullify the corrosion current and convert the corroding metal from corroding metal from anode to cathode if we apply impressed current which is a which is opposite direction to the corrosion current and to nullify that corrosion current it will connect this metal to the anode to cathode anode to cathode so this will convert this metal to anode to cathode so that's why this metal is protected by making anode to cathode here we are using impressed current this is impressed current is applied 
in opposite direction to nullify the corrosion current and convert the corroding metal from anode to cathode. This impressed current is slighter, slightly higher than the corrosion current. So condition is the impressed current is slightly higher than the corrosion current. Thus the anodic corroding, corroding metal becomes cathodic and protected from corrosion. This anodic metal is converted to cathode and this can be protected from corrosion. The impressed current is taken from battery. In impressed current, this is taken from a battery or a rectifier on AC line. This can be taken from battery or rectifier on AC line. In this, we are using one anode and we are connecting to the we connect you to the metallic structure which is to be protected. Metallic structure to be protected. Here we are taking pipeline. Here we are connecting one anode. In this, this anode is platinum, graphite or nickel. Platinum, comma, platinum, graphite or nickel. Which is buried, which is buried in the in the conducting medium adjacent to the metallic structure. In the conducting medium which is adjacent to the metallic structure to be protected and it can act as anode. See here we are taking platinum, graphite and nickel. So we, these are connected nearby the, the metallic structure which is to be protected and here we are applying the impressed current. So that is DC current which is rectified on AC line. DC current. So this is backfilled with uh, anodic metal is backfilled and composed of coke, grease or gypsum. So as to increase the electrical contact with the surrounding soil. So here we are buried in the soil. So for increasing the electrical contact with the surrounding soil, it is uh, the usually this backfill. This backfill is composed of coke, breeze or gypsum, coke trees or gypsum. So the positive terminal, the positive terminal of DC source is connected to the anode, is connected to the anode and the negative, negative terminal of DC source is connected to the metal structure to be protected, metal structure to be protected. It is cathode, it is anode. So this is a construction about impressed current cathodic protection. In this impressed ca current cathodic protection has been applied to open water box coolers, water tanks, buried oil or water pipes, condensers, transmission, line towers, marine fires and laid up ships etc. So these are used for the open water box coolers, water tanks, buried oil or water pipes condensers, trans transmission line towers, marine fires, laid up ships, etc. This kind of protection technique is particularly useful for large structures and for long term operations. In case of sacrificial anodic protection, they can not, they cannot useful for the large structures only, they can use for small structures. In the case of impressed current method, this can be used for large structures for long term operations. Here if we see this picture, here this is the anodic material. So this is a linear loop anode. So three types of anodes are there in this. This linear loop anode is attached to the this board and this can act as an anode and it is, it is protected the ships from the corrosion, ship from the Corrosion. This is connected to the DC current, DC power supply. So, this is impressed current cathodic protection method. Impressed current cathodic protection method. So, this is uh, useful for large structures such as ships, etc. So, what are the differences between sacrificial anodic protection and impressed ca current cathodic protection methods? So, sacrificial anodic protection, CP method, impressed current, CP method.
So this sacrificial anodic cathodic protection method is external power supply is not required. For sacrificial anodic uh, cathodic protection, external power supply is not required. In the case of impressed current cathodic protection, external power supply is required. Here we are using impressed current which is DC current. Uh, for this we should we, we should require external power supply. The cost of in, cost of uh, investment is low for sacrificial anodic cathodic protection method. In the case of impressed current cathodic protection, the cost of investment is high. This requires periodic replacement of sacrificial anodes and this replacement is not required as anodes are stable. So here we are using different anodes, sacrificial anodes, the replacement of sacrificial anodes are requires and replacement of anodes are not required as anodes are stable. Soil and microbiological corrosion effects are not considered. In the case of sacrificial anodic uh, protection method, soil and microbiological corrosion effects are not considered. In the case of impressed current CP method, soil and microbiological corrosion effects are taken into account. Sacrificial anodic uh, cathodic protection is most economical method especially when short term protection is required. This sacrificial anodic cathodic protection is uh, used for short term protection. So this is impressed current cathodic protection method is well suited for large structures for long or op long term operations for long term operations. This is suitable method when the current requirement and the resistivity of electrolyte are relatively low. In the case of impressed current cathodic protection, this is suitable method even when the current requirement is and the resistivity of the electrolytes are relatively high. So, the, in this case of sacrificial anodic protection, in the case of sacrificial anodic uh, cathodic protection, so here we are external power supply is not required. In the case of impressed current uh, cathodic protection, external power supply is required. The cost, the cost of sacrificial anodic uh, cathodic protection is low. In the case of impressed current, it is uh, very high and it can be used for short term protection. It can be used for long term operations. So these are the differences between sacrificial anodic uh, cathodic protection and impressed current cathodic protection. In this session, we, we have discussed about the corrosion controlling method that is cathodic protection in that we have discussed sacrificial anodic uh, cathodic protection method and impressed current cathodic protection. And also, thank you so much. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.